I ordered a bunch of these things, which are like the reflective tape IR sensors, but they don't act like a camera, so that's why I ordered multiple. So the plan is now I'm gonna put these behind the keys and have it read each individual key. So what I've done is I've created a cardboard custom piano, I guess, which has you put the piano in through the front here, slide it right in, and it stays pretty sturdy, it's good. And then in this little top loader right here, you put the breadboard, and then right here, you put the Arduino. And there's some wiggle room for the Arduino, but that's fine. It's mainly just so I can kind of push on an angle so I can still use it in different ways. And now, moment of truth, if I get the battery, where did I put the battery? That is where I put the battery. There's the light kind of on, and when you press the button, it gets even brighter. So, no matter like, this is like, it's kind of loose, but that's fine. It's no matter where it is, it's still gonna work the same. And now, I can just replicate that for each button, for as many sensors as I have, at least. Now I have it set up so that when I press the button, the input is going to the computer. And if you look on the screen, this is the value that it's putting out when it's idling. And now when I press the key, it hits 500, which is a nice, perfect, clean number. So I can say when it's greater than or equal to 500, then it's pressing whatever button I assigned to that. So I've come to discover that if I remove the LED from the circuit here, then the output that I'm going to be getting from the IR camera to the PC is always going to be 1023, which is the max value. But once I add the LED to the circuit, then it starts working fine, completely fine. And I just added it. I just literally just added it. As soon as I unplug this LED and put it in, it's always pressing key one. You cannot see it, but it is always pressing key one. And I do not know what to do or how to fix this. So I'm just gonna put a debug LED for all of them. And that should be fine. sensors on the breadboard but it seems that the fifth that I ordered or the fifth that I opened I guess is broken and it's always outputting a constant on state that kind of fluctuates so uh, I'm just gonna have to go with four buttons and now uh, the predicament I've come across is when I first showed that it was 500 every time you hit done that first key. Well, it changes every time you put it back in and out and the, the things always move around, but There is a way to detect it So what I'm gonna do is make it so that for the first like second or two that you first turn on the thing It will test where the dead the dead zones are and then see if it's greater than the dead zones for each And that's what I'll do and hopefully it'll work
issue, which is that the Arduino Uno does not do keyboard emulation. And the only other microcontroller that is of Arduino is the TNC 3.2, that I have at least. So I'm gonna try to convert everything to be on the TNC, and the TNC will work even better because everything can just be on the breadboard. So I won't even need to have the Arduino kind of just being there extra. So we're gonna see how this works and figure it out. All right, so because it was only my second time ever soldering, when I soldered the head, the pin headers to the Teensy, I kind of got a little solder right there on the chip, and the whole thing seems like it works, but all the inputs and outputs are fluctuating, and no real values are being outputted. So I actually just got in the mail a brand new package four breadboards because I only have one working breadboard at the moment. A brand new Teensy. So hopefully I can solder this one properly and get everything up and running and we can finally finish this project. such a tedious process this is I think I've spent maybe a total of like 50 bucks trying to get this project to work because we bought the microphone bought the headphone jack to test the microphone then we bought the four sensors had to buy some additional wires and resistors to make it all work had to buy a teensy broke the teensy bought a new teensy and so here we are all right I think we're about good so now we can finally start using this on some games. Let's start off with a, with a classic. Classic video game. It's an indie. Not a lot of people have heard about it. It's very old. It's an indie gem. <laughs> oh my. Can, can we sprint? Almost. Can we kill the Goomba? Oh no. Oh god. It thinks I just jumped. Okay, let's go. Get this mushroom. Alright. Wow. It's actually like, is not that bad when it actually registers the presses. I think the delay that I added works good, but not good enough to detect a single press. You kind of do have to hold it for a bit if you want it to work. Um, now the only issue I'm having right now is for some reason these values are changing. They're fluctuating far too much for my liking. I just need to re I just need to move and adjust these sensors so that they stay in place. Nice. All right, this is this is actually really good now. Oh. Okay, that's fine. No! So now what I'm gonna do is change it so that this third one, instead of key Z, it's gonna be key down. I'm gonna press the down key instead. Which, you guys might not think it makes sense, but Trust me, it'll make perfect sense for this next game we're about to play. So, let's go. Alright, so this game is III. I, I. This is a game created by one of my friends, Yukon Wainzak, says in the top left. And I'm actually going to start a new game. And the reason I have the third button bound to the down key, you'll find out shortly. So, use the left and right to move. Use the X key to jump. Oh god. Okay. I gotta remember that the button press will not register instantaneously. It will only register once the delay of the Arduino wants to register it. Oh god, we need the up button also. Okay. Well, 
this this jump might be impossible. Maybe not impossible, but it may take me a while. I may be here for a bit. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh. Nice. Oh yes. Give me a checkpoint. No, no. I need this game to give me a checkpoint immediately. Let's grab this item. Got another eye. Okay, so now you can use the third key to swap dimensions. So so far what I can from what I can tell this whole setup, honestly like there's little issue other than the fact that I gotta recalibrate every once in a while. Okay, I'm pressing nothing. I'm pressing nothing. What is happening? Well, I spoke a little too soon, my friends, and now I don't know what to do. <laughs> nice. Okay, we're good. Since we're on top of the pillar, I'm going to recalibrate. Oh god. Okay. Oh, come on. It didn't even... I, I'm moving on my own again. Oh my god. No way. What was that? Okay, let's talk to this person. All right, so I'd say that was working pretty good until around the end there. Um, honestly, it was working perfectly for a moment, but I don't think this is in good enough condition to call a controller yet. But right now, I don't believe I have the resources to make it the way I want to. So I think I'm going to leave the project at that for now. Um, I'm going to leave the code and everything in the description if you guys want to do it yourself. Um, I might post some diagrams or something of the breadboarding if you guys are interested in that at all. And maybe one day we'll come back and revisit this project, hopefully with more buttons, better responsiveness, and just overall better in every way. Um, hopefully. I can dream. So, uh, yeah. If you guys like this video, uh, hit the like button. If you guys want to check out the game that we were playing at the end, I, I, I by my friend Yukon Wainsack, the link will be in the description. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.